Hi everyone, Sandra here and you are on my channel, welcome. Today I want to share with you some thoughts of Dr. Joe Dispenza, one of the greatest mentor at the moment and because I love his work I want to share this with you for those who didn't read it. So this is from his blog and I love the explanations, I hope you will love it too. So let's see. This one is about plasma, matter, and projection of reality. From the smallest particle to the largest galactic formation, a web of electrical circuitry connects and unifies all of nature, organizing galaxies, energizing stars, giving birth to planets and, on our own world, controlling weather and animating biological organisms. There are no isolated islands in an electric universe. Tilda from Thunderbolts of the Gods By David Talbot and Wallace Thornhill While most people are aware of the three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas, the majority of us are not aware of the fourth state, plasma. As the fourth state, Plasma makes up as much as 99% of all matter. You can think of plasma as the connective tissue of the unseen world. Plasma exists when electrons, which are negatively charged subatomic particles, separate from positrons. Positrons exist in the nucleus of the atom and have the same mass and numerical equivalent as the electron, but instead of having a negative charge, they possess a positive charge. For a more simplistic understanding, imagine for a moment the classic, albeit outdated, image of an atom where you see the nucleus at the center and electrons floating around in its orbit. Because the nucleus has a positive charge and the electrons have a negative charge, they experience magnetism, but if you were to completely separate the electrons from the nucleus, you'd be left with these free-floating elements. Since a positive and a negative charge creates a magnet, these elements are extremely sensitive to, and responsible for, infinite numbers of electromagnetic fields. When this separation of electrons from positrons occurs, what remains is a soup of charged particles comprised of negative and positive subatomic particles. Although this soup is often referred to as a gas, it's more of a field of suspended molecules constantly attracting and repelling each other in space. This push and pull conducts an electrical current, similar to the way magnets create an invisible connective field, and forms the foundation of what's called the electric universe theory. The electric universe theory states that electricity, not gravity, is the dominant force in the universe. In recent years there's been outstanding research done on the electric universe theory. What the research demonstrates is that all forms of matter, from our cells, to our bodies, to our sun, to distant stars, are intimately connected by plasma. This means that everything we know in the physical universe has an electric field, and these fields connect to everything else in the universe through a greater, singular field. We could say that this unseen field forms a living matrix that connects all things material, large and small. And so, Think of source energy, singularity, the zero-point field, the quantum field. The unified field, or whatever you want to call this infinite unifying field of frequency and electromagnetism, as the energy source that creates all things material. 
as these waves of energy slow down to become matter, at a certain point. Just before they turn into solid three-dimensional structures, plasma is organized into complex geometric patterns that serve as the blueprints of matter. Rewriting the Rules of Virtual Reality, Part 2 Occasionally in video games, films, or other electronic media, the creators place what are called, Easter eggs. The origin of this term goes back to 1979 when Steve Wright, the director of software development in the Atari Consumer Division, used it to describe a hidden message in the Atari video game called Adventure. In this context, Easter eggs became hidden messages, images, or features that give the player special powers, magical amulets, or necessary information that allow them to advance to the next level. Unbeknownst to most people, there is an Easter egg in this three-dimensional reality we live in and it has always been with us, hidden in plain sight, just waiting for each and every one of us to discover it. That Easter egg is energy, the power of which resides in the directed concentration of our focus and awareness. Think of it this way, if our 3D reality were a game, our focus and awareness would be the amulet of this dimension, an amulet which many people, businesses, governments, and leaders attempt to compete for and try to manipulate, often for their own power, purpose, or financial gain. The good news is that, seeing as you are the action hero of this game, seeing as you are a sovereign, sentient being, you know not to give it away. Because you know that the creative power of the amulet resides in the generative potential of where you direct this concentration of energy. Now to return to the VR metaphor from part 1. Let's take this one step further and say that, when you have the VR headset on, you're in a labyrinth. For the sake of this writing, let's call a labyrinth a multi-layered matrix. According to the dictionary, matrix is defined as something that constitutes the place or point from which something else originates, takes form, or develops. Your job as the action hero is to find the doorway out of the matrix. When you pass through that door, you not only escape the matrix of the labyrinth, but you get a bird's eye view of it. If this were the case, then every time you escape the existing labyrinth, which in turn would enable you to see it from a higher level, you'd have a much greater understanding of it. Said another way, you would see it from another dimension. You'd have to agree then that seeing the labyrinth from above would almost be like receiving the map that shows you the door out of the matrix, would it not? This means that every time you put the VR glasses back on you'd have more knowledge about being in the labyrinth. Thus, you'd be able to do more, create more, see more, and have greater control over the outcomes in the matrix of the VR world. All of this is to say that, every time you take off your VR headset by removing your attention from the reality within it, the reality of being somebody, someone, in something, in some place. In some time, you escape the matrix of the labyrinth. How? By simply no longer placing your attention on it. If your attention is no longer on the reality of being somebody, someone, in something. In some place, in some time, then you become nobody, no one, in no thing, in nowhere, in no time. As such, to get beyond all of your known associations to this 3D reality is the doorway to the quantum field. Because where you place your attention and awareness is where you place your energy. To place it on a reality beyond the senses, a reality made up entirely of energy and information, is to enter the quantum field. Every time you do so, your interaction with this coherent energy and frequency, which is how information is carried and transmitted, rewrites the code of the VR headset. By rewriting the code, 
You change your experience of this 3D reality. Why? Because we don't see things how they are, we see things how we are. That's how your perception and understanding of the game can evolve. More importantly, however, you can't upgrade the VR experience from inside your headset. When inside the headset, you can only experience that world equal to the rules that are programmed into it. Thus, in order to create a greater advantage in the VR world, it would have to be reprogrammed from outside the VR headset. When our community takes all of their attention off of the known material 3D world, moves into brain and heart coherence, and places all of their attention and awareness on the energy of the unknown, they are able to transduce information carried on different frequencies from the quantum field. In this full-on sensory experience that arises through the translation of energy into imagery, to the individual interacting with these frequencies of energy, their inward experience is as real, if not more real, than their outer experience. Since experience enriches brain circuitry, which then produces feedback in the body in the form of emotions, now they've broadened their spectrum of perception in the VR headset. And the result is a biological upgrade in the body in which they experience the VR world. Rewriting the Rules of Virtual Reality, Part 3 The idea of virtual realities is not necessarily a new one. It is precisely what Plato was talking about in his Allegory of the Cave, or what Lewis Carroll was talking about in his 1872 novel. Through the Looking Glass, in Plato's Allegory of the Cave, a group of people live their entire life chained up in a cave facing a wall. And the only reality they know are the moving images on the wall. But the greater truth is that the images on the wall are nothing more than the projection of shadows created by people and objects moving between the cave dwellers' backs and a light. The source of which in this case, is a fire. The purpose of the allegory is to explain how the ancient philosopher is like the prisoner who is freed. It is only in their freedom that they realize that what they thought was reality, was not reality at all. In Through the Looking Glass, Alice has a similar experience of entering an alternate reality by climbing through a mirror. And just like a reflection, on the other side of the mirror everything is reversed, including logic. While these were once fanciful ideas of great thinkers and artists, now science, which is the contemporary language of mysticism, has confirmed that there is indeed another reality, another layer of laws that supersede how Newtonian laws once described the universe. To understand this next layer of laws, we need to first understand what Newtonian laws are. In classical Newtonian physics, everything in the physical, material world, such as people, bodies, things, and objects that occupy a particular place in time, appear as separate. As such, Newtonian laws describe matter, time, and the infinite expanse of the physical universe. Thus, everything we experience in physical reality through our senses is local in this space-time world. This describes the world that exists within the VR headset. And in the headset it appears that mind has no influence on matter. Quantum laws, however, the next layer of unifying laws which Newtonian laws ladder up to describe the smallest aspects of reality, which are not comprised of matter but of energy. We could say these laws are the inverse of the Newtonian laws. While the quantum field is made up of frequency, energy, vibration, thought, consciousness, and information, since it is the invisible field of energy that connects, influences, and unifies everything physical or material, there is no thing local in space. 
Another way of saying this is that nothing occupies a space at a particular time. This is a realm or reality you can't experience with your senses, it's the 3D world you experience with your senses. So the quantum world is the non-local realm in which mind and matter are so connected that it's impossible to separate the two. You can think of the quantum field as the reality outside the VR headset, a reality in which all possibilities and dimensions exist. Speaking of dimensions, in this very moment, like Matryoshka dolls, otherwise known as Russian stacking dolls, there are infinite dimensions stacked on top of this dimension, and each one contains its own laws and labyrinths. In quantum physics, this is called the many worlds theory, and it was originated in the late 1950s by the American physicist Hugh Everett. A simple way to understand the many worlds theory is to imagine a loaf of bread. Every slice of bread is a plane, a possibility, or a dimension, and there are infinite numbers of those dimensions. The many worlds theory describes these infinite parallel worlds and realities that nanosecond by nanosecond, branch off from one another, and yet they never intersect or communicate. Thus, the many worlds theory describes not a universe but a multiverse. The key to finding the hidden door to higher dimensions, or the next level of the VR game, is understanding the rules of the game, because when you are in the VR headset, you have to play by certain laws that have been programmed into the headset. In this physical plane of demonstration where everything requires an action, your doing is what connects cause and effect, or the thought to the experience. Because there is separation between these two aspects of our known reality, doing the thing takes time. These rules are no different than certain Newtonian laws that we know, and so when we experience reality from inside the VR headset, it makes sense that you have to play by them. When you play by these laws, it's implied that if you're intelligent, skilled, practice doing your thing, create good habits, become educated, make the right choices, and so forth. You receive certain payoffs. These are the ways you get or acquire things that you perceive to be real in the VR headset. In this manner, you are playing the game from inside the game. But if you want to upgrade the game with new information, you have to get outside of the VR headset, and the only way to do this is by interacting with the field. This requires you to take your attention off of anything physical, material, or known, and instead place it on energy and frequency. For many people, taking off the VR headset and stepping into the unknown is scary because all of their attention and energy is immersed in the VR headset, the 3D world. While they perceive what is in the headset to be the real world, for the very reason that they can feel it, taste it, smell it, hear it, and see it with their senses, it's actually the realm of illusion. To venture outside the headset requires you to take your attention off of the 3D world. Because you can only enter this quantum realm as pure consciousness. If you can connect your awareness to this immaterial world of the unknown, the body can receive new signals and information in the form of energy. In doing so, through your interaction with information that is being carried on frequency. You can receive an upgrade to the VR experience. And, since you don't see things how they are, you see things how you are, the new internal experience created from the interaction with frequency and information from beyond the senses creates new brain. Circuitry. When you open your eyes and come back to your senses local in space and time, your newly acquired circuitry will allow you to perceive a broader spectrum of reality. As a result, you can see more of the reality that has always been there, but you lacked the circuitry to perceive it. Now you have a new experience of your environment, some type of physical change in your body. And you move into a new future in time. 
This is the way students in our community are upgrading their experience of life. To return to the analogy of this physical human experience being like a virtual reality game, whether a person is fit, healthy, young, or smart, these are all characteristics of the action hero. But at some point, your game ends, and so you remove the VR headset and take a break. That's the moment you step outside of that perceived reality into a completely different one. In the reality outside of the VR headset, you are still consciously you, self-aware, but there is no longer that same virtual world that you have been identifying with. There are no bodies, that means you don't have a body, there is no one, there are no things, there are no places, and there is no relative time. So, with nothing material, physical, or known to interact with, which have created the illusion of separation, you have all the time you need to review your score, look at what you've accomplished, and observe yourself more objectively from a different dimension. Simply said, you take a break, become more self-aware, contemplate how you did, and if given another opportunity. Decide how you can play the game better. Maybe that's what happens when we die. So, the next time you put the VR headset back on to play another game, you might come back as another character and choose to have different experiences, learn new things, improve your abilities, work on your weaknesses, make better choices, get more points, obtain more things, go further in the labyrinth, and gain new knowledge and information by playing the game again. All of this begs the question, do you have to die to have that experience? What if, while you're alive, you were able to gain information from a reality, not inside the headset, but outside of it? Up to that point, while playing the game, you were fully immersed in the virtual world. And so the only information you could access would have to be programmed within the hardware of the headset. That means you could only learn new information from your experiences in the VR world. And you'd have to keep playing the game over and over again in order to master it. Consequently, all of the information you learned about that VR world would come from your interactions while playing the game. Therefore, your evolution while in the game could be relatively slow. That's because there are certain rules with limitations that must be followed which are programmed into the game and can only be known by whomever programmed the illusion of that virtual world. The good news is that our research has led us to a simple formula, a practical process that allows us to escape the limitations and predictable laws of classical Newtonian physics that govern this three-dimensional reality. We've identified a door out of the VR reality which allows us to transcend the slow evolutionary process of trial and error and the survival of the fittest. Just like the VR world. In the illusion of our three-dimensional reality, we are fooled by the senses into separation. Thus, we gain information by occupying a physical body, local in space and time, which interacts in a particular environment made of objects and people who also have bodies, in certain places and times. And our perception of ourselves is a separate individual consciousness in a world where everyone and everything appears to be independent from us creates linear time. Therefore, in this plane of demonstration, we have to do something in order to make something happen. Maybe great masters in history, who were able to take all of their attention off the illusion of the material world and connect to the frequency and energy of the quantum world, could change the rules of their experience of this three-dimensional reality. After all, how could they manifest things from nothing, walk on water, raise the dead, heal the sick, or be in two different places at the same time unless they received their information from upgrades outside of the headset. And since all coherent frequency carries information, by putting all their awareness on the immaterial quantum world, 
which exists beyond the senses and is made of energy and frequency, they were able to advance their abilities within the VR world by interacting with and connecting to the world outside of it. All of this begs another question, why are we so immersed and invested in the game inside the VR headset? Over millions of years, all of those moving molecules and positive and negative charges that are creating the experience of symbols in the VR headset had no survival benefits, and the Darwinian paradigm of survival says if you don't use it, you lose it. Thus, we didn't need to see the light, the energy, or the frequencies that are creating this material reality, because it wasn't relevant to our survival in this three-dimensional reality game in any way. Because of this, after millions of years, the human brain edited energy and frequency out of its circuitry. After all, being human for millions of years hasn't been easy. If you are being chased, D by a saber-toothed tiger or spending enormous amounts of time looking for food so you don't starve to death, energy, light, and frequency are going to have to take a backseat. If physical existence has been about the survival of the fittest, smartest, or most adaptable, then over millions of years, a species of early human beings that were facing harsh environmental conditions had to think differently about a new way to survive. It's logical then that now this is going to lead to different choices, doing different things, and through trial and error. Creating new and more evolved experiences, the result of which produces new chemical feedback from the environment through our senses. That's new information that has to make it into our biology. It's that sensory feedback from the new experience in the environment in the form of emotions that begins to select and instruct new genes in new ways. And since genes make proteins and proteins are the building blocks of life, the organism slowly makes the biological upgrade to better survive in the same environment. However, one organism must procreate with another from the same species to ensure its survival in perpetuity in that particular environment. This process may take thousands or even millions of generations until the dominant gene is finally expressed. As a consequence, the species may develop thicker fur, better eyesight, longer legs, more fast twitch muscle fibers, and so on. This is a long, tedious process that occurs over millions of years. And yet, in one interaction with the unified field and the correlating energy carrying new information, a person's biology and chemistry can be vastly upgraded. Why? Because the emotional feedback from the inward experience is less chemical and more energetic or electric because it is coming from a reality beyond the senses, not the three-dimensional reality. In this light, it's more of an awakening, it's more enlivening. It is an arousal. Through this interaction with energy outside the VR headset, when you re-enter the virtual reality, you may have a different upgraded body, see and perceive a different world, and or be living in a whole new time. You've received the upgrade from outside the headset while most people are still operating within the headset. Which is the old paradigm of matter, you as a body, trying to change matter, the material reality. Thus, over millions of years, the brain's circuitry has been shaped to only focus on the three-dimensional world. It doesn't experience energy because it's not wired for it, and yet, when the person begins to have the interaction with energy, new neural circuits are created. As a result, the spectrum of the VR reality is broadened. We don't see things how they are. We see things how we are. Asterisk 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 in the case of this moment in history, it does not matter who the makers of this game are. What matters is that we wake up from the illusion so that we may step out of the matrix to enter the next level of the consciousness labyrinth. As I alluded to in earlier parts of this blog, 
By playing up a level in the quantum game, your interaction with energy and frequency changes the rules of this three-dimensional game. It does so because every experience we have in the quantum field causes us to profoundly alter our understanding of this physical reality. As a side effect, when we come back to our senses, we perceive a broader bandwidth of reality because now our brain is wired to see a greater breadth of possibilities in the game. Our interaction with information from the field rewrites the code, because it's energy that installs the new code and upgrades the program. Now that you know that there's a new set of rules in this adventure game, let me ask you a final question. Are you ready for the next level?